Today, we have a leaked transcript from Oceangate submersible shortly before it imploded. The transcript is yet to be officially confirmed at this point but share your comments below if you were able to confirm the transcript. I also find it really odd that most news outlets have been quiet about this transcript, which makes me wonder if they are trying to hide it. The transcript spans a range from 7.52 a.m. to roughly 9.57 a.m. I have highlighted the submersible's communication in a different color than the above sea level communication named top, which I will call topside throughout the video. The transcript begins at 7.52 a.m., this timeline aligns roughly with what was stated in the news as the time Oceangate received clearance for the descent. However, we'll start our review at 8.19 a.m. after clearance is given for descent. At 8.19 a.m. Topside says, you're 15 minutes into the dive, current depth. System check, please. The sub responds at 8.21 a.m., system check complete, all in order. All lights are green. We are 756, proceeding. This translates to we're 756 meters depth from the surface. Topside responds at 8.22 a.m., thank you. Proceed. Topside checks in at the 30-minute mark, 30 minutes in, update please. The sub responds, all systems are functioning normally. We're in good shape. Continuing our descent as planned. At 8.36 a.m., Topside responds, superb, proceed. The conversation depicts everything is proceeding smoothly and as planned. At 8.49 a.m., Topside checks in over 45-minute mark. Current depth. Confirm status. The sub responds at 8.51 a.m., sub depth at 1934. All systems stable and descent continuing as planned. Happy crew. Topside responds, excellent. You're at the hour mark. Sub responds at 9.02 a.m., all is smooth sailing here. The sub responds at 9.17 a.m., all under control at 29.50. No adjustments needed. We're enjoying the ride. But at around 9.28 a.m., an alarm from the RTM, real-time monitoring, system was noted. 9.28 a.m., the sub reached out, we're noting an alarm from the RTM. They don't say what the alarm is. The sub goes on to say. Reducing velocity descent depth 3433. Topside responds, understood. Do you need to ascend? Sub responds about 2 minutes later at 9.30 a.m., no change with thrust. The rate of descent is increasing. At 35, going to release the ballast now. Topside agrees and responds, yes, agree. Release the ballast. The submersible's rate of descent was increasing after the RTM alarm was noted. So they go ahead to reduce its descent velocity and notice there still is no change in thrust. Their rate of descent seems to have kept increasing. They make the decision to release the ballast. You might be wondering what the ballast is. In submersibles and submarines, ballast tanks are used to control the buoyancy of the vessel. Some submersibles, such as bathyscaphs, dive and resurface solely by controlling their buoyancy. They flood ballast tanks to submerge, then to resurface either drop discardable ballast weights, or use stored compressed air to blow their ballast tanks clear of water, becoming buoyant again. In most submersibles it is located here. Those two compartments you see there. On Oceangate, it's not so obvious where the ballast tanks are. Back to the transcript. 9.32 AM, the sub responds, no improvement. Preparing to jettison the frame. Unfortunately, after releasing the ballast there is no improvement. So they prepare to jettison the frame and start the ascent. Which signifies they are attempting to drop every weight that's not critical to the ascent of the submersible. What puzzles me here is the fact that the topside was not giving much suggestions. You would expect in this dire situation, there should be more information from the topside. The submersible suggested the release of the ballast, and the jettisoning of the frame, Let's go back to the transcript. At exactly 9.33 a.m., the topside responds, affirmative. Update when able. RTM indicator status. The sub responds at 9.35 a.m., frame jettison multiple attempts needed. But starting the ascent now. 
They highlight that multiple attempts was needed to jettison the frame and also don't answer the RTM question posed by the top side. Top side responds, multiple attempts. What is your status? RTM indicators. Depth. Update please when able. Responses back from the submersible has become a little more scattered. It is not at the same rate as before which indicates something was already wrong. At 9.38 am, the submersible responds, crackling sound at aft. This is about 3 minutes after jettisoning the frame. A crackling sound is heard at aft. In nautical terminology, the aft is an adjective or adverb meaning towards the rear of the ship. They were hearing cracking in the rear. Apparently this was brought to the attention of OceanGate's CEO in 2019 by a submersible expert named Carl Stanley. Carl Stanley took the Titan submersible for a dive. And during the dive he heard a loud cracking sound. Carl Stanley emailed OceanGate CEO, Stockton Rush, to urge him to hold off on future trips. Mr. Rush never replied directly to that email, Mr. Stanley said in an interview with New York Times. But he made some changes to the Titan, including building a new hull, and called off the planned dives for that year. Comment below on your thoughts on that. Back to the transcript. At 9.38 am the topside asks, can you identify source? RTM indicators. The sub responds, negative, in shortened form. Topside asks again about the RTM at 9.40 am, RTM status. Sub responds two minutes later, trying to run diagnostics. Ascending now. But very slow. Sounds have subsided, global RTM alert active all red. They finally give update on the status of the RTM, stating that they are all red. Topside responds, understood. Any codes? Depth. Ascent rate. Updates when able please. The sub responds right away at 9.43 a.m., slow ascent in progress. Quarter predicted. Unclear why rate is small. No indicator. At 34.76. The top side responds, we are talking it over with the engineer. Stand by. Then top side asks. Depth and status please, what's the wattage on upwards thrust? The sub responds at 9.46 a.m., reading red on the A-Power bus. I switch to B, at 3,457 meters. More sounds aft. Submersibles are designed to withstand crushing underwater pressures, like those 12,500 feet below the surface. Down there, the pressure is about 400 times greater than at sea level. More sounds are now being heard from the aft section. This could suggest water coming into the aft section as a result of damage, no matter how tiny the damage could be. Subsequently, any damage or defect to the Titan's hull could result in a leak which would trigger the vessel to immediately implode under those extreme pressures. The top side responds at 9.47 am, understood, continued ascent. Talking to Carlos about power bus situation right now. A minute later at 9.48 am, the top side asks, we are activating recovery procedures. Carlos is requesting wattage output from Busby, status update please. Velocity of ascent. There is no response from the sub. At 9.50 am, the top side responds, we're not receiving you. Update please, at 9.51 and 16 seconds am top side says, status and depth report. Top side echoes again at 9.53 am we need you to respond with status and depth. Carlos is requesting a wattage update on thrusters, at 9.55 am, we are unable to read you. We are moving to recovery coordinates. Report if you read. And finally at 9.57 am, please respond if you're able. No response from the sub. The last response that was gotten from the sub was at 9.46 am where they talked about more sounds coming from the rear of the submersible. Let's look at that again. Reading read on the A-Power bus. I switch to B, at 3,457 meters more sounds aft. We can gather that the primary power bus A was malfunctioning and the Titan had to switch to the B-Power bus. They were not ascending at the expected rate. They had only moved up from a depth of 3,476 meters to 3,457 meters, which is 19 meters in roughly 3 minutes. 
That's 6.3 meters per minute. OceanGate advertises that the Titan speed is 3 knots which is 3.5 miles per hour which equals 94 meters per minute. So this is definitely a really slow ascent. At their current ascent rate it will take them 548 minutes which is roughly 9 hours to get back to sea level. Based on this transcript alone, it is challenging to determine the exact cause of the incident or the loss of lives. However, it is evident that the crew encountered various challenges, including an increasing rate of descent, unidentified sounds, and power bus issues. The lack of clear communication further complicated the situation. We must remember that this transcript provides only a glimpse into the incident, and a thorough investigation would be necessary to determine the underlying causes. Our thoughts go out to the affected individuals and their families. As always, feel free to share your thoughts and theories in the comments section below. Stay tuned for further updates on this developing story.